In this HVACR training video, we're going over the intermittent pilot ignition system on a gas furnace. We're going to show the flames being lit, the voltage measurements, the pressure measurements in order to understand its operation. Let me give you a tour of all these components here. And this is a digital water commonometer, which we're going to be measuring the outlet gas pressure of the propane gas going through. And then here we have our multimeter and we're going to be measuring the voltage for alternating current. Here's a thermostat sub base and here's the face of that thermostat. And here we have a 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. This is an intermittent pilot ignition control module. And then right here we have a single stage pilot ignition gas valve. And so we've got our propane piped in here. And on the outlet of this gas valve, we have a pilot tube and also a main tube. And so when 24 volt power is applied over on the pilot valve, it's going to allow gas to flow through. And when 24 volt power is applied to the main gas valve, it's going to allow this gas to flow through. This gas is going to be flowing through these burner trays and it's going to shoot that flame upwards. Now, the burner trays are different than burner tubes, which would shoot the flame forwards. And right here, we have a flame rollout switch. Right here, this intermittent pilot ignition control module is going to be what's controlling everything. It's going to be able to test to see if there's a flame over here it's going to be sparking, allowing the right over here, the pilot to ignite. And so basically we're going to be sending 24 volt power between these two terminals, the 24 V, that yellow right there, and this green right here, the 24 volt ground. And we're going to be doing that at our thermostat. So we've got 24 volt power. So our, our red wire coming into the thermostat on the R terminal. And we also have our common from the transformer right over here on the 24 volt GND. And so if we go ahead and jump between R and W, it's going to turn the heat on just the same way uh, that would happen in the thermostat if you were to turn the temperature up higher than what it is in the room. And so let's just go ahead and see that real quick. So you already heard the spark ignition, the pilot flame is lit, and now the main pilot valve is, is being powered. So now you see the main burners are lit, and I'll just remove our jumper between R and W in order to turn the entire flame off, including the pilot flame. So this is only intermittently on right here. Now this pilot flame right here is only lit on a call for heat. And so when it is lit right here, this pilot flame, you need to be able to prove that the flame is present right here at the control board. And it needs to do that before it, this control module sends power over here to the gas valve to allow the full gas to flow through because that would be a huge danger, right? To just send gas through. And so uh, also there's usually a little chamber across here that allows the gas and the pilot flames uh, to come in contact in order to ignite the main tray right here. Uh, but this was pulled out of the bottom of a boiler. It's also going to have a uh, just enclosed area so it will be easier for the main burners to ignite than out in the open like it is here. So I first want to show you that if you don't have a flame and you do have a call for heat on your thermostat, then the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have 24 volts right over here telling this control module to even turn on. And the very first thing that's going to happen when, when we do measure 24 volts is that this sparker right here, it's going to send about 10,000 volts over to this little rod. And at 10,000 volts, is going to be jumping from the rod to this ground frame right here. So there's a little bit of a gap, like an eighth of an inch. And so we don't want to measure that with our multimeter because that would just blow the fuse in the multimeter and mess that up. Uh, but let's just go ahead and see that first. We're going to jump from R to W. So we got 28.4 volts right there. The next thing that we're going to measure is PV to MVPV. And so you need to be able to see, like if the pilot flame is not there, you need to see, do you have 24 volts on the PV to MVPV? So this is the common MV slash PV. PV should have 24 volt power on it right here, but MV will not have power until this control module verifies the flame. And we'll go over that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do this again. And I'm just gonna, just gonna be lighting the pilot valve. So you see we have 27 volts and you do hear and see the pilot flame. So I'm gonna pull that off. Okay, so we know that that has 24 volt power. Now I just wanna show you that this 
MV, which is the main gas valve, which is the solenoid that is going to open to allow the full gas to flow through, that's not going to be powered until after you hear the spark uh, stop sparking and the flame is just lit right here on the pilot. So let's go ahead and do that. So we don't have any power on the main valve yet. And so there you see we now have power. Now let me just show you what happens with this uh, flame rectification process. This black wire right here, I can show you right over here. If this is off, you see it's not able to prove that the flame is there. And because this is completing the circuit, now the spark, because there's 10,000 volts literally on this wire right here, it will jump over to that terminal. So right now I'm going to just take this off before I'm going to put this wire back in here again. What you want to do with the power off is you want to be able to check this for a loose connection to ground. You want to make sure that this little nut right here is tightened in for your, for your pilot tube because this is part of the electrical circuit and you want to make sure that this little black wire here follows back over to the GND burner over here because if this is not connected right here then it's not going to be able to prove that the flame exists and so I'm actually not going to be measuring the flame rectification signal on this particular ignition control module because it is a spark ignition. If this was a hot surface ignition I wouldn't have to worry about that high voltage ruining my multimeter. So the big thing about this is you want to make sure that you have your metal surfaces over here very clean. The, the spark rod acts as part of the flame rectification process. It is the flame rod and the spark rod all in one. And so you want to clean that with non-soap steel wool and also this uh, metal right here because this, this metal, you're going to have power. So alternating current is going to be traveling through here after, after the flame is lit, after it's done sparking. It's going to send an alternating current signal, probably about 100 volts, right over into the flame. The flame is going to rectify that uh, voltage and you're going to have a direct current, a very small amount traveling on this ground frame over through this little pilot tube, over to this gas valve, to this black wire and over to this black wire which needs to be on GND burner. If you do not have that, then this pilot ignition gas valve, you're just going to hear it continue to just trying to ignite the pilot even if it is already uh, lit. It's not able to prove that there's a flame. That's the problem. You hear how it has a problem there? It was getting ready to allow the main gas to flow through, but now it's not. Right now, it thinks that there's no, there's no gas there. It's not lit, basically. There's no flame. So the flame is needed to complete the circuit for the flame rectification process. Now, I don't want to touch this wire right now because there is 10,000 volts on that. And when you have high voltage, the electrical power will jump from one, one contact to another. So I'll take you up for an up-close image of that spark so you can see it. Now, if you needed to adjust that flame so the flame envelops that rod a little bit better, then what you can do is you can take this little screw off right here. There's typically, anytime you have a, a pilot tube right near there, there should be a pilot tube or pilot pressure adjustment. And so you can take a little flathead screwdriver in there, and if that flame does not seem to be enveloping both this metal right here and the spark rod, then you need to be able to adjust the flame to a higher higher amount. Now the other issue is you could just have low gas pressure coming in and so you can measure that with a manometer over on this side. Um, but right now we're just piped into the main uh, right over here. So I removed this little uh, uh, plug right here and I put in a brass barb tap. And so we just use our uh, ratcheting service wrench for that. But anyway, yeah, you can adjust the pilot flame up or down. The other thing is you want to make sure that uh, it's oriented in the proper manner. Obviously the flame is going to be trying to go upwards in this, in this manner so it might not be enveloping the rod properly because of its position, but it's usually screwed and fixed in position. The other thing is this pilot termination right here might need to be adjusted uh, to the side a little bit or something like that, or maybe it needs to be replaced, or you might even have a little orifice in here 
that's plugged. And so it's not allowing the full uh, gas for the pilot flame to cover that rod right there. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in again. And we'll go ahead and make sure that we're fully grounded for the flame application signal. And this time what I wanna do is I wanna measure our outlet gas pressure right here. So I just repositioned my multimeter so I can measure the MV and the MV PV right here, our 24 volt signal. And so we're gonna go ahead and jump from R to W and we're gonna measure our pressure. So this is on the main tube. And so you need 24 volt power here before you are able to see your pressure over on this side. So you see we're measuring 10 inch water column and that will be roughly the correct pressure on the outlet of a propane gas valve. So you should have about 11 to 13 inch water column on the inlet in order for this to operate correctly. And there's also an adjustment over on the back right over here for this pressure over here. And so if this is not set properly or maybe it didn't have the conversion kit in it uh, properly set from the get-go, it can actually be adjusted. And so if you watch the pressure right here, see we uh, turned it counterclockwise, which is reducing the pressure on the outlet, or clockwise where you can increase the pressure. Uh, but you're wanna, gonna wanna follow the manufacturer's literature in order to set it to the proper gas pressure for the furnace or boiler. So with these tips, you should be able to determine if there is a problem right here. Uh, so you know it has to have 24 volt power coming in to start the sequence of operation. You know it has to have a spark, so you should be able to hear the spark. It is possible that this wire is rubbed out and it's sparking somewhere other than right here. Uh, hopefully you can be able to see the spark on a unit, but it oftentimes it's all the way in the back and you can't, so you want to listen for it. It should be occurring right here. Uh, after that happens, you should also have your, your gas pressure coming through, but there could be a clog over here. So once you have a flame, you're going to want to listen and make sure that the spark stops, which means that it's ready to power the main gas valve over here, the main solenoid valve, and it's going to allow the full gas flow through. And if that doesn't occur, then you know that there's some other issue. So maybe uh, it's not proving that the flame is there. You know, and if you don't have 24 volt power on here, it could be cut off between the thermostat and this at something like this, which is a flame rollout switch. Maybe the flame rolled back due to a, a bad draft, or maybe there is a crack in the heat exchanger. Like a, there could be several big issues that could be occurring. It doesn't mean that this switch is bad, but this switch will trip if there's a flame that comes in contact with this little metal on the front right here, and it can only be manually reset. So you might have a thermal limit, you might have a flame rollout switch or both of them on a furnace uh, or boiler. And so this could be cutting off power to this control module before it even gets here. On this ignition control module, you notice that there is no terminal in the sense. And so there could be an additional rod that, that basically, so there could be a terminal here with a wire attached over to the flame and there could be a rod that's enveloped in the flame. And so that would be your sense wire. And you would still need your, your ground in order to complete the circuit for the flame notification signal between here and here. In this particular control module, it's between the spark and the ground. And so the sparker is acting as the flame rod. I hope this video helped. And if you want to learn more about gas valves, gas furnaces, make sure to check out some of the other videos we have linked down in the description section below. And also make sure to check out some of the free articles we have over at acservicetech.com. And we also have some quizzes there so you can test your knowledge. We also have our refrigerant charging book and also our inverter mini split book. So make sure you check those out at acservicetech.com. And we also have our books and quick reference cards over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.